amazing long association with Prabhupada and he has first hand you know account of what happened to Srila um, Prabhupada's movement in the last year of Srila Prabhupada and after that. So Puranjan Prabhu is also the pioneer, you know, like in you know, one of the pioneers you can say, in bringing out the poison case and the child abuse case that happened, you know, and also the Ritwik case, you know, and he, his, his, you know, his website is the encyclopedia of the Guru fall down. So if you want to know what happened, how many Gurus fell down, how did they fall down, you know, so everyone goes to, you know, all all Prabhupada Nugas, even all his con people, they go to his site, his website, because there the information is there. He was the first person to put out the, all the information there. So we have with him, we have, we have with us, you know, Puranjan Prabhu. So today he'll be speaking on how did the 12 Gurus fell down, also on the update on the poison case. And on the child abuse case also. Yeah, Prabhu, the floor is yours. Hare Krishna. Dandar Pranam. All Guru Sashra Prabhupada. Jai. Well, first of all, there was 11 gurus in 1978. And I was in England at the time. So the guru there was Jai Tirtha. So, first of all, Jai Tirtha started having problems with drugs. He was sitting on the Vyasasan and singing real crazy, out of, out of tune, and so we knew something was wrong. But then later on, he was having sex with a follower, and this was actually photographed, <laughs> quite an embarrassing situation. So the, a woman took a photograph of Jai Chirtha ha having sex with a disciple. So Vichitra was the temple president of England, and he flew to Los Angeles, and he had the photograph, and he, he said, Jai Chirtha's taking drugs, and he's having sex. And this was only like 1979, so this started right away. I mean, he was a guru in 1978, and already <laughs> he was having major problems a year later, not even a year, a year later. So, of course, I questioned the whole thing right away. As soon as they said, Jai Chirtha's a guru, I said, how can he be a guru? Because the reason he was in England, many people don't know, Jaitirtha was already in trouble in Los Angeles. He was having sex with some man's wife. And there had been a murder of another devotee who uh, he, he murdered someone who, who was having sex with his wife. So they wanted to move Jaitirtha out of Los Angeles in case he would be also murdered for having sex. And, and the, the husband was threatening to kill Jaitirtha. So Jaitirtha was already not a pure devotee by any means and, and everybody knew that you know all the gbc knew that so anyway sure enough he's having sex again right away after he's a guru so so anyway i challenged the whole thing so they sent uh they sent ramashara jayataka bhagavan to england to try to put out the fire and sort everything out so they they confiscated all the crazy kirtan tapes that jaitirtha had been making and they made a declaration, nobody can have these tapes, because it was evidence that, you know, Jaitirtha was really going crazy. So, uh, anyway, so I, I challenged, they had a big meeting with all of the devotees, and they were all sitting on these big, huge chairs, you know, Ramachar, Jaitirtha, Bhagavan, uh, Jaipataka. And so I raised my hand, I said, well, wait a minute, how, how can Jaitirtha be falling down by smoking pot, but... None of us are smoking pot. Are we better than the Acharya? So that was my question. How come we have a higher standard than the Acharya? That doesn't make any sense. So they, they told me, sit down, shut up, we're going to talk to you later. So later they had a meeting with me and they said, look, we're going to make you the guru of Ireland. And then we won't bother you. You will be over there, you'll have your own disciples, and you'll be the guru there. And if you don't agree, then you have to leave. So they gave me an option. Either I join them or leave. So, of course, I, I left. But anyway, to make a long story short, Dry Tirtha later on had his head cut off. Okay, so that was the first problem. So I, I got kicked out because I questioned uh, Dry Tirtha. And so then I went to the United States and 
I really didn't have any shelter anywhere because I had been banned from ISCON altogether. But I went to Berkeley, I visited Berkeley in 1980, around 1980, and the police uh, in Berkeley started talking to me, and I, I made friends with the police, and the police told me there was Prabhupada, and there was people who thought they were Prabhupada. But the police at that time, by 1980, they had already made 72 felony arrests from the Berkeley Temple. They were arresting devotees left, right, and center because Hansa Duda had all kinds of criminal things going on. So, same thing. Hansa Duda was having sex with followers and he was taking drugs. All right, so does anyone have any questions about these individuals up to this point? <laughs> so, anyway, they just covered up for Hansa Duda. You know, Hansa Duda was just in one problem after another and they had some meetings in Berkeley and they just, they would not remove Hansa Duda no matter what he did. Because they had a problem. If they remove one guy, then the whole que question would come up. Well, how are any of them authorized if one of them is not authorized? So they had this whole uh, very rigid policy of keeping all of the 11 going no matter what. That was really a big, important thing for them. So, you know, Hari Kesh, uh, was having problems uh, as well. And he was kicking out all kinds of devotees. Bhagavan was having problems, he was having an affair, he kicked out all kinds of devotees. So an interesting thing happened there, I was in England, Bhagavan was kicking out the devotees, so I had to go to the Paris train station, Bhagavan had kicked out like 50 Prabhupada devotees, and they were all at the train station, they had no money, no food, no no diapers for their baby, nothing, they had nothing, he just, he just dumped them off at the train station. And so Jayatirtha sent me down there with some money to get them to England, at least. <laughs> so, so there was this whole purge of Prabhupada devotees going on, like everywhere. Now later on, there was one girl who left Bhagavan's farm, and she had a baby, and she went back to her mother's house. So her husband was in Bhagavan's zone in France, and he came up and he, and he actually beat up the, the mother of this girl who was a devotee girl and he and he kidnapped the baby and took the baby back to France so this was in all of the newspapers like all over Europe Hare Krishna baby kidnapped kind of thing so I, I had <laughs> the idea to sent me to to uh, France to pick up the baby so you can see they were already creating these hu huge scandals and the reason this girl left was that she couldn't get sanitary napkins, she couldn't get diapers, she couldn't get supplies for her baby. So Bhagavan's riding around in a big Mercedes car, you know, living it up like a millionaire, and the devotees at the farm can't get soap, can't get diapers, can't get supplies. So this became known publicly. I mean, this was a huge newspaper story. So anyway, so I go to Paris, pick up the baby, and bring the baby back to England, and when I come to the customs, you know, normally if you have a person coming into the customs with no passport, you can't you can't bring them into the country. Okay, so so anyway, so I go to the customs with the baby, and, and right away they everybody at the customs knows who the baby is. They know this is the Hare Krishna baby because it was in all the newspapers. So they said, okay, no, I had no problem at all. I just drove through the customs with the baby without any papers. I had no birth certificate or. Nothing, you know. So that's how public the story was. Everybody at the customs already knew about this baby. So, so you can see they were just creating these huge public scandals. And they didn't care. They didn't care if the public was thinking that this is a rotten religion. They just didn't care about these kind of things. So, you know, Bhagavan was having problems. He wasn't taking care of the people. He was kicking out people and this became publicly known. And uh, then we had Ramachar. Ramachar was dating a 13 year old girl. Now later on I I knew this girl. She's now an adult. She's a mother, everything. You know, I, I know this person. So Ramachar wasn't just dating her. He was having an affair with this girl. It was his Guru Kuli student. And he was going to the mall and buying miniskirts 
for this girl. And this was known. Some devotees followed Ramachar to the Santa Monica Mall. They saw him go into the store buying miniskirts for this girl. So this was known. This was known to the devotees because you know, a group of devotees made a report which they published and, and circulated around. So, so it's not like people didn't know. A lot of people knew. What is Ramachar doing? He's having an affair with a 13-year-old his student. Then we had, you know, Jaipataka. And, and in Jaipataka zone in Mayapur, same thing. They were kicking out Prabhupada devotees. But Jaipataka zone in Mayapur became a big central headquarters for the child molesting. He had Bhavananda there. He had Kirtananda there. And they had Satudanya, Nittai Chan. Danudar, a whole bunch of very abusive people, and Jayapataka was protecting those people. And, and this became a big problem because in England, I mean in India, you know, how are you going to, who are you going to report these crimes to? How, how are we going to even do something legally in India? It's very difficult. So that was going on. And then Bhavananda and Kirtananda became the leaders of the school system in India. And they kicked out Yasoda Nandan and Dr. Sharma. Dr. Sharma had been personally selected by Prabhupada to be in charge of the Gurukula in India. So the first thing they did was kick those people out. And that's what led to all the, the problems. You know, they, they removed the people that Prabhupada had specifically ordered should be in charge uh, uh, over there. Uh, so then we had Hridaya Nanda, and Hridaya Nanda just, he was having a lot of weird connections with with his lady disciples. There was this one lady and she had large breasts. <laughs> so they used to call him the, the boob acharya and things like that. This was already in 1980. So in 1980, they, you know, they were complaining that he's always associated with this lady. They're having secret meetings in his room with this lady. So Dravida, Dravida is still in ISKCON now, but Dravida made a letter and he was complaining. He says, why is Sridhar Ananda always privately associating with a woman? What's going on? So the the point I'm making is this was known to a lot of people. You know, Dravida wrote a letter. It was published all over the place. They had a big meeting. What are we going to do with Sridhar Ananda? He's, you know, he's hanging out with a woman all the time. That's not good. Then we had Kirtan Ananda. Kirtan Ananda, same thing, kicked out a lot of devotees. And he, he kept having young boys in his room all the time. Now, Kirtananda was a homosexual. We, we knew that. I mean, us, the older devotees, we knew that. So, Kirtananda had been uh, part of what was called the Mott Street Boys. There was this um, group of devotees, uh, Kirtananda, Hayagriva, Umapadi, a few others. They were all homosexuals. They were living in a house together. They were all a group. They, and they all joined together. Now, everybody knew that. You know, we all knew that these guys were homosexuals. So again, how can people say they didn't know? They, they knew. We, we knew that. It was, not, it was publicly known to all of us older devotees that, that Kirtananda had been a homosexual. So he's, he has young boys in his cottage all the time and He's driving around with a young boy on his lap all the time. So, I, I mean, I right away said, that's sort of a major red flag. What's going on? Why, why is this going on? So I had a, uh, just a one-time visit. I visited New Vrindavan in 1980 on my way. After I got kicked out, I was going across the United States, and I stopped at New Vrindavan. And I saw Kirtananda driving around with a, with a little boy on his lap on, in his Jeep. And I said, what is going on here? How, you know, he's a homosexual. you got the little boy on his lap. Doesn't, doesn't everybody notice? You, you can't be doing that kind of thing. So a lot of people knew, but you know, then a lot of devotees didn't want to speak out because then they would be kicked out. So they just kind of went along to get along. That's, that's really what happened. Then we had Tamal Krishna in Texas. Same thing. He was kicking out Prabhupada devotees. And he had molesters on his farm. He had a farm in Oklahoma. And uh, a couple of boys were, were beaten badly. They had broken bones and 
all kinds of things, you know. So later on, I, I helped the mother of two of these boys sue Tamal. This was the first child molesting lawsuit in ISKCON. This was around 1986. I had Tamal sued for about $3 million, and he lost. He lost the case. So I helped the first child molesting lawsuit in Dallas. But again, you know, the point is, if, if I'm suing Tamal, and this is all, and he has to pay $3 million, that means everybody knows. I mean, you know, this is a big amount of money. All the other leaders of ISKCON know that Tamal has to pay this $3 million. So how, again, you know, how can people say they didn't know? This was public information. This was a court case in Dallas. And then, of course, we had Bob Ananda, and Bob Ananda was living very extravagantly. He wore a lot of very expensive jewelry, and he was driving around in a Jaguar, and he was wearing a cape, and, uh, you know, he was hanging out with a lot of gay men and, and boys, you know, hanging out with Bob Nanda. And that's the reason Bob Nanda is still in Mayapur now, because Ambarish said, hey, if you get rid of Bob Nanda, I'm not paying any more money for Mayapur. So if we go through the list, you know, all of them had major problems, many times public problems. Nothing was done. Nothing was done. The GBC never did any corrective, you know, activity to really rein in these these kind of problems. So how is this related to the poison issue? I believe that Prabhupada was poisoned by the core group. The core group was Tamal, Jai Pitaka, Jai Veda, for sure, those guys, you know, and Babananda, they were the core group. So later on, around 1990, uh, Prabhupada's conversation books were published in only a limited quantity. And like the 1977 conversations were hidden. We had no uh, information about what Prabhupada was talking about in 1977 because the conversations were hidden from us. So somehow or other, Tamal allowed a very small printing, a thousand copies of the conversations to be printed. I got a copy and I noticed in one of the November 1977 conversations, it says, conversation about poison in Hindi. So I said, well, wait, wait a minute. What is this all about? So I knew that there had been some conversation. But I, I didn't believe the tape would ever surface. I never thought I would ever get the tape, but I prayed to Krishna. I said, Krishna, if there is ta a tape of this conversation, you need to get me this tape. You, Mr. Krishna, I never ask you for anything, but I'm asking you for one thing. Get me this tape. <laughs> so, so now later on, a devotee from Texas who, who had been in Vindavan in 1977, and he knew that Prabhupada was complaining about poison. He got a hold of the tape. He went to the archives and got a copy of the tape, and he called me up and he says, Pranjan, I have this tape, and I'm going to bring it to you. But then after that, don't tell anybody who gave it to you, or don't tell anybody where I went. He, he went to India after that. He, he, he was just hiding out. He didn't want to be known, because <laughs> he thought he would be killed for bringing out this tape. So I got the tape. This was in 1997 when I got the tape. So that's 20 years after Prabhupada had left. So I went to a Bengali writer, L.A., and I got him to make the first transcription. It was mostly in Bengali and Hindi, the conversation. I didn't know the details of the conversation. I knew it was bad. I just knew something bad because the word poison kept coming up over and over again. So anyway, this Bengali man, he did me a big favor, but he says, don't ever tell anybody who I am. <laughs> he was afraid also, afraid of these guys. So that was the first transcript. And then, so I made a tape myself of uh, I was trans transcribing the conversation and, and converting it into English and explaining what was going on. And I, I made a tape, you know, where I had part of the original tape with my explanation. And then I made about 250 copies of, of that tape and I, and I just circulated that around the L.A. temple. I was living right by the Los Angeles ISKCON temple. So I circulated that tape around 
And, you know, it was shocking for most of us that no one even had any information that Prabhupada had, had complained that he's being poisoned. Now, one of the people who asked for a copy of the tape was Naveen Krishna. Naveen was in, um, I think he was in Florida at the time, so I mailed him tape. And Naveen noticed that there was some something going on, you know, in the background. So he, he got this tape to an audio expert in Florida, and they began to enhance those noises, and it was actually them talking in the background. They were whispering. And when we enhanced the whispers, we found out that they were, in fact, talking about poisoning Prabhupada. So they gave us, I didn't even know the whispers were there originally, so. I just went on Prabhupada's statement. He says, someone's giving me poison here. And, and, and Bhakti Chiru translated the uh, Prabhupada statement in English. Someone gave him poison here. That's what Bhakti Chiru said. So that's all I needed to know. I didn't need the whispers. But anyway, then Nichananda got a copy. And Nichananda did more audio enhancements. But then Hari Sori, he was a GBC guy. I mean, he still is a GBC guy. He thought, this is nonsense. Prabhupada wasn't poisoned. And I can prove it because I have a hair sample from Prabhupada. He had Prabhupada's clippers, hair clippers. And so he sent the clippers to, to Nichananda, you know, convinced that this would prove that Prabhupada had not been poisoned. But instead, Nichananda did an orig original test and he found that there was arsenic in the hair, like very heavy levels of arsenic. So that was the initial test. Now later on, much later on, just a couple of years ago, uh, Nishananda did an enhanced test. I mean, the techniques for, for analyzing hair samples has become much more um, advanced. So they did a, a second test and they found cadmium in the hair. So there's arsenic in the hair, there's cadmium in the hair. So cadmium does not happen naturally. I mean, cadmium is something you find in batteries, you know. And it says in the battery, don't swallow this battery because, you know, it could be fatal because of the cadmium in the, in the battery. So anyway, so I, I launched what was called the, the poison investigation. This was all in 1997. In 1997, I got the poison tapes. I started the Wendell Turley uh, child molesting lawsuit, $400 million against ISKCON. And I started a lawsuit against the BBT for changing the book. So in 1997, I was doing the, all three areas. The book changes, the poison issue, the molesting issue. And I was pushing on all those issues at that time. And then as time went on, more people agreed. Yeah, we can't change the books. Yeah, it looks like Prabhupada was poisoned. Yeah, we had a lot of molesting going on. Nobody can deny that was going on. So that's how these major issues started. And I was behind all of them or most of them. And it just expanded from there. For, you know, now we have, you know, hundreds of people who, who believe Prabhupada was poisoned. We have thousands of people who believe the books were changed unauthorizedly. And we have a lot of people who agree there was a huge child molesting going on. Out of four, there was 4,000 children in, in 1977, supposedly 4,000 children in this kind of, out of them, half of them were molested. That's the estimate. Half. That's 50% of the children were molested. Now, in the Catholic Church, they have 6% molesting, and they consider that as horrible. So imagine 50%. So that's that's what we had, the levels in ISKCON. And that's because everybody just, the parents knew. They knew their kids were being molested, and they didn't go to the police. Nobody wanted to go to the police. Nobody wanted to report this. The parents didn't want to report it. The leaders didn't want to report it. And so just... It just went on and on and on. So it, was a bit, it wasn't only the leaders, in other words. It was a lot of the devotees, the rank-and-file devotees. They went along with the deviations. They supported Jayatirtha even after they knew Jayatirtha was having sex, taking drugs. They still said, oh, but Jayatirtha has to stay in the Vyasasan. What? <laughs> no, 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 no. That is not what Prabhupada teaches. Prabhupada never said... You can put a deviant 
in the Vyasa Sea. He said thousands and thousands of times, you cannot worship conditioned souls. It won't work, can't work, doesn't work, and it will cause trouble like the Gaudiya Moth had. So he warned us over and over and over, but somehow or other people just, you know, it's, it's just the material world. People always think, I'm going to do, I'm going to do better. <laughs> I, I'm going to cheat Krishna. You know, the other people tried to cheat Krishna. They didn't succeed, but I'm going to cheat Krishna and I'm going to have success. It, just, it doesn't work. You, can't, you just can't cheat Krishna. It always catches up, and it is catching up. And now I'm being interviewed by a big television show. This is going to be a four-part television series on, on the Krishna religion, and they're going through all this history with me as well. They're asking the same question. Who are these 11? How did these 11 become gurus? Was Prabhupada poisoned? How did all this molesting happen? So these, these are the questions that everyone is asking right now even the ordinary people. And these uh, news people, when, the, when they first called me, the first thing they asked me, what's happening with Lokanath? So this Lokanath issue is known to the public. It's not like, the, you know, the, the GBC thinks, well, nobody knows about it, nobody cares about it. No, everybody, everybody knows about it. Even the Carmi mundane news people know about it, you know. So they're not really hiding anything from anywhere. It's just, you know, it's just one scandal after the next. But this proved my original point. I said the GBC is promoting pedophiles as gurus. That was my original complaint. And I said Jai Tirtha is having sex with a follower. And Prabhupada says when a guru is having sex with a follower, it is the same as a father having sex with his daughter. So even in, in 1978, I was saying, look, this is, this is a pedophile. Jaitirtha is a pedophile. He is having sex with his daughter, his spiritual daughter. And Lokanath even wrote a letter. He wrote a letter, you know, after he had been exposed. And, and he said, I feel like Satya is like my daughter. Yeah, she is your daughter. She's your spiritual daughter. And you are sexually aggressing your spiritual daughter. So that's pedophile situation. Lokanath even admits that. She's like my daughter. Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. Why Why have devotees allowed this to go on? That's just the material nature. Why, why, why do so many horrible things happen in the world? Because people allow it. Why did the Pandavas get mistreated so badly over and over and over again? Because everyone allowed it. That's why. So that's the nature of the material world. People are in illu illusion and they don't stand up for the right thing. So, does anyone have any uh, questions at this point? Yeah, you can unmute also and ask question if you have any question, or you can put the question in the question box and ask. Well, uh, somebody's asking, how, how can people tackle the issue now? Well, I don't really think it can be tackled easily because the GBC has control over the assets of ISKCON. So, the only option really is to, for us to, to form an independent, separate system. That, that's my belief. I don't think the core situation is going to change easily, you know. I mean, what could have been done, what, what the Catholic boys did, some Catholic boys were molested. And so, like 40 of these boys got together and they made a public protest in front of the church. This was like 20 years ago. So 40 of the molested Catholic boys went to, in front of the church with signs and they protested. They said, hey, you know, this church is where we were molested and where we want justice to be done. And then the, the television came, the newspapers, everybody came to find out what's going on here. So that's all we could do as well. If we had 40 people in front of an ISKCON temple with signs you guys are worshiping a child molester, Lokanath. What's what's going on with that? We could do a lot. We could, but you'd have to. You need to apply external pressure by the media, something like that. That's the only thing they they care about. Is you know, they have a big stick. Unless you have a bigger stick, they don't care. So we could do that. Forty people with signs in front of one of their temples would get the media 
and would get attention and would take them down. It would take them down. Because, you know, once this information became public that they're worshipping a child molester, they would have to change the situation. <laughs> yeah, there's, <clears throat> so somebody asked, what about the trauma? Yeah, there's a lot of trauma. I mean, there's hundreds of guru coolies, ex guru coolies, that live around here, around San Francisco, and they avoid ISKCON, they don't like ISKCON, they're never going to participate in ISKCON, they're done because they've had so much traumatic experience with this guy. So what can we do? There's, there's very little we can do. You know, once, once somebody's been damaged that badly, it's very hard to, hard to correct that. But, uh, you know, the Guru Coolies, I don't see the Guru Coolies coming to protest. They're just, they're like broken people. And they're broken because the parents did not support them. So they just got support from zero support. You know, the parents told them, be quiet, don't complain, don't protest. And some of the parents were yelling and screaming at me when, when I started the lawsuit. I mean, they, they were very angry that I was helping their children. Well, now somebody says, yeah, this is going to defame ISKCON. Well, yeah, it's going to defame ISKCON because if you just allow all kinds of criminal, criminal activity to take over your religion, then it's going to make your religion look bad. And how many times Prabhupada warned us about that? He said that over and over and over. Do not make it a stool society. If you make it a stool society, then how are you going to clean the, the stool up? <laughs> it's going to, yeah, it's going to create big, big problems. So it's going to take us years to, to recover from, from all this. So all we can do is start independent, independently preaching our... Uh, the right thing ourselves and build up a, a group of people to make an alternative to to the ISKCON. We have to make our own independent alternative. There's no no way other to fix it and then show people that at least some of us know what's what's right. Now these these media people, TV people who are interviewing me now, they said, you know, thank God we met you because we thought all of you were going along with this child molesting worshiping thing. But, you know, now we know that not all of you agree. <laughs> so, uh, What about Gora Gopal? I don't know. Gora Gopal, is he, I think he's a disciple of uh, one of the GBC gurus. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, I mean, Radhanath. What about Radhanath? Well, Radhanath was, was, was a big part of Kirtananda's regime, and he was, he was paying uh, this Tirtha guy. You know, Tirtha was the person who came to, to kill Sulochan and, and he was paid by Radhanath. So Radhanath was with Kirtananda the whole time. And he still is. I mean, Radhanath had Kirtananda buried in a samadhi in India. You know, Kirtananda is buried in a samadhi. And Gopal Krishna helped that. Gopal Krishna helped. He had to get the permits. You know, they had to get the city burial permit for Kirtanananda and Gopal Krishna arranged that. So Gopal Krishna is very closely associated with this. Uh, wait a second. <laughs> How does Radhana look so saintly? Well, he, he looks saintly to some people, but when I, when Radhanath came here, this was about five, six years ago, we, we had a Rathyatra here in San Francisco. I went to the Rathyatra and Radhanath came and he went up and sat in the big seat to speak and as soon as he started speaking he, he only spoke for 30 seconds and there was a group of teenage boys who were you know who had been there it was like 10 teenage boys as soon as Radhanath started talking one of the teenage boys says oh he's gay he's gay and they, and they all just left so yeah some people think Radhanath is a saint but other people think he's gay and he's hanging out with Kirtananda, who's gay, and he's burying Kirtananda, who's gay. So there's a whole gay thing going on here. So, yeah, there are a lot of devotees who think Radhanath is a saint. A lot of devotees thought Kirtananda was a saint. But the ordinary, regular people don't think that. I, for example, this lady, Jane Wallace, from the CBS television, I was interviewed way back in 86, when she saw Kirtananda sitting on his chair, covered with the hands of like 20 boys, she said, hey, this is gay. This guy is a, is a pedophile. She saw that immediately, immediately, immediately. It took her two seconds to figure out this Hare Krishna religion is worshipping a gay pedophile guy. She figured that out right away. So when she met me, she said, hey, 
is this a pedophile cult or what? I said, yeah, it is a pedophile cult. And she said, well, thank God I, I met you because I thought all of you were just pedophile worshipers. So, yeah, I mean, Kirtananda looks, looks like a saint to some people. And he looks like a gay to other people, and the same with Radhanath. So we have to change that. We've been left with the job of picking up the pieces. You know, they just they just burn Iskon to the ground, and uh, there's not much left of Iskon. There's not much left of Iskon anyway. I mean, they've already cha changed the name of Iskon. The New York Temple is not Iskon. Texas is the Texas Krishnas. It is not Iskon. Churu is in Utah. He is the Utah Krishnas. That is not Iskon. And the Atlanta Temple is the Atlanta Krishnas. That is not Iskon. And Bhakti Vikas Swami just started another program in Atlanta. Krishna is life program. Okay, that is not Iskon. What what is left of Iskon? There's not much even left of Iskon. Well, uh, the, are the disciples gullible or foolish? Well, most of them are gullible and foolish, but, you know, some of their, them are sincere. You know, some of them write to me privately and they say, you know what, we we know this is all bogus, but we just want to serve Krishna and serve Prabhupada. And, you know, there, there, there are people who are stuck in, in ISKCON who who are sincere, but what what are they going to do? Well, yeah, you know, the government, <laughs> the government might ask, why are these people misusing the money. I mean, this would be another legal possibility. Why are the leaders all living so nicely and the Guru Kuli children were starved? How did that happen? So they misused the funds. They misused the ISKCON funds. Maybe the government could investigate that. I, I don't know. But that's it's a big problem because, you know, there's religious freedom and there's a lot of bogus gurus all over India who are obviously living nicely. I mean, look at that Radhe Ma. Radhe Ma, you know, she's obviously a, a lunatic person, but she's a, a guru and the government doesn't do anything because what, what are you going to do? What, <laughs> if we have religious... If people want to worship a bogus person, what, what can you do? But Radhe Ma was invited to Bombay Temple. You know, that shows you. I mean, ISKCON has all these crazy people. Uh, is it a big problem in India? It's a big problem everywhere. You know, everywhere is the same thing. I mean, ISKCON has become a Hindu hodgepodge organization everywhere. They don't, they, they just, they're not even trying to preach to the Westerners in America anymore. They just, they bring the Hindu, they have Hindu weddings and Hindu car puja and Hindu, uh, all kinds of Hindu things, and then they just try to get money out of the out of the Hindus. Let's see. Well, how can we re revive Iskand's name again? We, we all we can do is preach the right thing, and that's all we can do, and hope for the best. And, and it's a brick by brick thing. We're going to get one person here and one person there to understand the proper process. You, we're going to have to rebuild Iskand brick by brick, one person, you know, grassroots. One person at a time. Uh, they don't listen and they fight to prove themselves right. Well, they don't listen to each other. They're fighting with each other. You know, they have a big fight over should Lokanath be a guru? Not everybody agrees. So they made this policy that he, he can be only allowed to speak where he's, where he's invited to speak. Women can be gurus, but only where they're invited to be gurus. So they're fighting amongst themselves right now. Yeah, they unite together to, to fight against us because it's a money-making business at this point. You know, they're making lots of money. I, I just posted a letter by Dr. Chaturvedi. He's a Hindu guy. But even he can see there's all kinds of problems. You know, Dr. Chaturvedi, he's, he's, he's one of their guys, but he's saying, wait a minute, you're not preaching to the Westerners. You have this woman guru pro problem. You have this Lokanath guru pr problem, and you're not fixing the problems. And unless you fix the problems, the GBC will have no credibility. Lokanath just went to uh, Durban, South Africa. He's there right now, I think. Yeah, and yeah, he's, he's, he's initiating people. He's still a guru. And they haven't got, a, they haven't got him under control at all because he, he makes money for them. Uh, yeah, we need to make it like Bangalore. Well, Bangalore is friendly with me and I'm, I'm helping Bangalore. I help Bangalore with their lawsuit. So, 
yeah, I think Bangalore is our best ally at this point. And they have a nice temple here. They have a nice temple in uh, Sunnyvale, which is not far from me. And they have a good program. They're doing something. Well, yeah, they always say it's Vaishnava Aparat. I mean, they've always said that when I said children are being molested, well, that's Vaishnava Aparat. We can't change the books. That's Vaishnava Aparat. Prabhupada said he was poisoned. That's what, you know, all cults do that. That's how cults operate. And yeah, they manipulate. They, they manipulate things. Now there was a a sex cult called Nixivm, N X I V M, something like that. I posted something about that group about a year ago, I think. But one of the ladies in this group, you know, these ladies were being used as sex mules, and they were being branded by the the founder, the guru. The guru was having sex with all these ladies, and he was telling them they have to have sex with men to get money for the cult. All kinds of things were going on. But the, so one of the ladies said, "Wait a minute, we we can't have this going on." And so she started to complain. And what she found was that the other ladies who were being exploited, they became her worst enemies. They were complaining, and they were trying to stop her. So that is how cults become. Cults just become like a life unto their own. So these lady, other ladies, even though they were being exploited, they defended the cult. Oh, <laughs> is this Hindu mythology? It's funny that Sasvarup is one of their big gurus, He's, and he wrote many of their original papers in the, in the 1980s. But he also wrote, he says, I have to battle constantly with doubts that Krishna is a myth, that Krishna is mythology. So he's one of their biggest gurus, he's one of their biggest writers, and he has to doubt, is Krishna a myth? You know? <laughs> well, yeah, they say Ritvik, Ritvik. Well, Ritvik is just, that's their, that's their way of defeating everything. Oh, it's just Ritvik. Yeah, Stockholm Syndrome, exactly. It is Stockholm Syndrome. You are being exploited. You are worshiping bogus people. And it's Stockholm Syndrome. The followers don't realize. The followers can't break out of the... It's a cult. You know, that's the situation. And that's what happened to those ladies in the Nixvium cult. They had Stockholm... They were stuck there now. They had invested their lives in this whole process. Um, is calling fake gurus upright? Well, no, they're, that's not upright. Prabhupada always called fake gurus fake gurus. <laughs> I mean, when we were in India, Prabhupada would say horrible things about these bogus gurus all the time. We had this uh, Guru Maharajji, who was uh, supposed to be a 17-year-old boy, but he was really a 35-year-old man. <laughs> so he was there. And uh, Prabhupada said, we urinate in his face. We urinate in his face. So, so Prabhupada, he was, Prabhupada talked horribly about bogus gurus. So we should have no problem doing the same thing. Uh, after the death of these gurus... Will there be more successors? Well, they're having a hard time finding successors. They even wrote in their 2021 GBC report, we're having a hard time recruiting more gurus. We need, we need more gurus. They're having a very hard time recruiting more people, even their own people, to be gurus. Uh, tell something about Jaya Pataka. Well, Jaya Pataka is one of the leaders of the poisoning. Now, when Prabhupada said, I'm being poisoned, Jaya Pataka said, poison is Shvarya Rasa. Poison is Jaya Rasa. That's him. That's Jaya Pataka. So I believe that he was very connected to the poisoning and he was very good friends with Bhavananda. Bhavananda is a very central part of the poisoning. Jaya Veda, very central part. And then Jaya Pataka started all this child molesting thing in Mayapur. And now I had a GBC who was friendly with me and in 19... 86, they knew that Bhavananda was having sex with taxi drivers and all kinds of things were going on. And he, he said, I can't go to Mayapur and complain about this because Jayapataka's people will beat me up with bamboo sticks. So, you know, Jayapataka's people would even beat up a GBC, never mind me or somebody else. <laughs> was I in direct connection with Prabhupada? Y yes, I was. Um, what happened was that Prabhupada was locked up in a room in 1970 and by four sannyasis, and they were trying to take over ISKCON. Way back in 1970, there was an attempt to take over ISKCON, and Prabhupada was very disturbed by that, and so he, he, he left America, and he, he went to India, and 
I also went to India at the same time. You know, Prabhupada asked for some people to come. So I came there. And I was very lucky because Prabhupada did not want to go back to the United States for quite a long time. So he spent most of that two years in India. And I spent that same time. So we had a little party, a little group, and I was in that party. So we were traveling all over India. We went to we went to from Delhi to Jaipur, we went to Calcutta, we went to Vishakapatnam, we went to Madras. And Prabhupada was with us there, so we had this little group. Yeah, he was locked in a room before the poisoning. This He was locked up in 1970. So, yeah, this was way before the poisoning. And the four sannyasis, uh, let's see, the four sannyasis, Sub, Subal, Kirtanananda, <laughs> I can't think right now, but anyway, there was only four sannyasis at the time, and all, all of them were involved. Well, one of my experiences with Prabhupada, just to give you some idea, we were at this big meeting, there was another big guru there. And so they put two big seats. They had a one seat on one side of this long hallway, big Vyasasans. And, and Prabhupada was in one big Vyasasan. And on the other side was a, this Mayavadi guru. I can't remember his name. But anyway, he didn't speak. He, he would write things on a chalk board with the chalk. And he would say, give, give me a cup of tea. So so then his followers would go get him a cup of tea. So Prabhupada, um, we were in this room with these two people, just Prabhupada and this guy. And all of a sudden Prabhupada just started speaking in Hindi. We didn't know what he was saying, but we knew it was bad. And he was just saying, this, this man is bogus. If he was not speaking, he wouldn't be writing what he wants on the chalkboard. So he's not speaking, but when he wants a cup of tea, he writes on the chalkboard. <laughs> so he's bogus. He's a bogus person. And we knew Prabhupada was saying that in Hindi, even though we didn't understand the Hindi, because this man was getting very, very upset. We could see that. So it's pretty amazing. We go to this meeting. <laughs> Prabhupada's the guest. This other guy's the guest. And right away, Prabhupada is just tearing into this guy. And so this then this guy, he just stands up and he's, and he's stomping down from his seat and Prabhupada says, see, he's angry. He's angry because he is not detached from this world. This is all bogus. He's not detached. So when people ask me, should we call people rascals? Yeah, Prabhupada called people rascals right to their face. I mean, right there in India, you know, he would tell people that this guy is bogus. <laughs> And so we were very embarrassed, like, oh my God, you know. So that that was what happened. But but also we were in Mayapur with Prabhupada and all of his god brothers were there and they we we knew there was a problem. You know, the god brothers did not like Prabhupada. So the Gaudiya Math people were criticizing that Prabhupada says back to Godhead. And they said, oh, back to God, that's nonsense. We were never with God. We don't start with Krishna. We start in Brahman, in Brahma Jodi. So some devotees went to Prabhupada and they said, oh, Prabhupada, your God brothers are criticizing back to Godhead. That It's bogus. We, we are not with Godhead. And Prabhupada said, he said, that is because my God brothers are tinged with Mayavada. They do not know we were all once with Krishna all of us. So, tinge with Mayavada. So this was an important thing because later on, the GBC went to Sridhar Maharaj and Narayan Maharaj and, and, and many other Gaudiya people who were preaching that we do not originate with Krishna. So, I, I knew right away, that's wrong. Back to Godhead means we were once with Godhead. And, you know, that, that's the title of Prabhupada's magazine. So then, they were also criticizing that we are using the title of Prabhupada. And they didn't like that. They said, uh, Prabhupada should not use that title. So at one point, we were all in, we had this little tiny cottage there. We were in Mayapur. There was only a little cottage there, a straw hut. And we were living in tents. So this little hut was very tiny and not many people could come in there. So about 50 of the godbrothers came, you know, Gaudiya 
And Prabhupada offered his obeisances, and they, none of them offered their obeisances back. And I said, well, that's, that's not right. They're not re respecting Prabhupada. And then Madhav Maharaj came into the room, and he was, he was yelling and screaming at Prabhupada, and he had his finger right in Prabhupada's face. And, and I couldn't understand, because it was Bengali, but we knew that he, that he, he kept saying, Prabhupada, Prabhupada, Prabhupada. So we knew that they were criticizing, this Madhav Maharaj was criticizing that Prabhupada is using the title of Prabhupada. So after they left, Prabhupada said, I need, some, I need to post a guard by my door. My God brothers might try to kill me or hurt me. So that was Prabhupada's relationship with, with the God brothers. They were very envious envious that he was using the Prabhupada title and they didn't like that he was preaching back to Godhead and then uh, Hansadutta's wife Himavadi yeah Himavadi was uh, she came back to that little hut one day and she was crying and Prabhupada says what's wrong and, and she said oh you know I was at the Sridhar Maharaj temple and they were all complaining that you are the guru of the Malechas and you, you could only attract malicious. You can't get any Brahmanas to your program. So, a Prabhupada says, "That's right. My God brothers are envious of me. Don't go there. Don't don't ever go to Sridhar. Don't ever visit his temple." And and so we didn't go there. And now later on, the GBC said Sridhar Maharaj is our Shiksha advisor. Uh, no, Sridhar doesn't did not agree that we should call Prabhupada. Prabhupada. Now one thing that happened with when this happened, when all these God brothers were saying we can't use Prabhupada title, Narayan Maharaj was there in Mayapur at that time. And he was agreeing with with Srida Maharaj, Madhav Maharaj and all those people that Prabhupada is wrong to use the title of Prabhupada. Prabhupada is wrong to say back to Godhead. So Narayan was with that group at that time in 1971. Now later on, the GBC, you know, said Narayan Maharaj is our Shiksha Guru and all the rest of it. <laughs> but no, Narayan Maharaj was never our Shiksha Guru. We didn't have any association with Narayan Maharaj. We never met with him or associated with him or advertised him or nothing ever when Prabhupada was here. It's all happened after, after Prabhupada left. Then they went to Sridhar, they went to Narayan, and, you know, made them the Shiksha Gurus of ISKCON, because Narayan was a big supporter of Tamal. Narayan was in Texas with Tamal. So I'm in Texas, having Tamal sued for $400 million, and Narayan is in Texas, propping up Tamal. So that's what happened. Narayan became a big supporter of Tamal and the GBC. So then, then Narayan comes to Los Angeles, and I'm on the beach. He's on the beach. I'm, I'm chanting my japa on, on, on the beach. And so I see their, their group. I walk up to their group. And Jadarani says, oh, it's Pranjan. Maharaj, it's Pranjan. you got to talk to Pranjan. I said, yeah, let's talk. Oh, we can't talk here. What? Oh, I got... <laughs> I got to drive to Fullerton, I, like a two-hour drive. Okay, all right, well, so I drive over there to Fullerton. And Narayan Maharaj and me are supposed to meet 8.30 in the morning. Uh-oh, our 8.30 is canceled. It's 11.30. Okay, 11.30, 11.30, canceled. I'm sitting there. I'm sitting outside his room. Uh, it's 2.30 now. Okay, 2.30, 2.30 is canceled. Oh, okay. 5.30, okay, 5.30. Oh, 5.30, oh, he, he left the property. He went out the back door. He's gone. He's not here. Oh, so... <laughs> See, because that is because I had the poison tape with me. I had the poison tape in my pocket, and I was going to play that to Narayan Maharaj to, to show him that Prabhupada does say he is being poisoned. But Narayan at the time was saying, uh, you know, I'm a demon, I'm a rascal. He was trying to get me killed, basically. So, yeah, Narayan Maharaj was with them. And then he claimed he, he's going to meet with me. <laughs> He invites me over, and then he doesn't talk to me because I'm going to defeat him. That's why. So they can't really talk to me because as soon as they talk to me and I, and I review their history, well, wait a minute, wasn't Narayan Marge complaining about Prabhupada title? 
And didn't they call him Swami Maharaj? That's what they said in 1971. He's Swami Maharaj. And Narayan Maharaj still uses that term, Swami Maharaj. So that is because they don't want to call him Prabhupada. And they all did that. All those Gaudiya Math, if you notice, they all use that term. So Narayan Maharaj, yeah, he's taking people, but what kind of people is he getting? He gets, he got Bhagavan. You know, Bhagavan became the big supporter of Narayan here, here in San Francisco. But who is Bhagavan? I mean, Bhagavan is a, a cheater. He's had all kinds of problems. And his daughter became the big, you know, leader of their group. And his daughter came to my friend's house to record a kirtan because she sings you know, kirtan. She said, just before I sing the kirtan, I, I need to do something. So she smoked this big, huge marijuana joint, Bhagavan's daughter. And then she just fell asleep <laughs> for like two hours. She just fell asleep on his couch. So, you know, there's a lot of pot smoking going on in their group. And then Bhagavan's daughter got into a big fight, a physical fight with her sister at, the, at one of their meetings because the sister had run off with Bhagavan's daughter's boyfriend. So this is the problem with their group. They have all these Rasika things going on, but can't even behave like, did she have Kanti? <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, then, you know, later on, Bhagavan's daughter marries a, a lady. She has a lesbian marriage. Then the, the, the woman that she marries writes to me for help because Bhagavan's daughter stole all of her papers. She's a foreign citizen living in America. She can't be without papers. So Bhagavan's daughter and her got into a fight. She stole, she stole, Bhagavan's daughter stole her, her van and her money and her papers and everything. So then she comes to me <laughs> for help. So I have to help this lady. I have to help Bhagavan's daughter's wife, who is a lady. And I did. I, have, I, I published the story and I said, hey, you know, you can't mistreat people like that. You can't just steal people's property. I, you know, I don't care if she's a lesbian or not. You, you don't mistreat other people this way, you know. So, so I published the story and it made a big embarrassment. And so then Bhagavan's daughter had to return her, her papers. So there, in other words, there's a lot of low class stuff going on with the so-called Narayan group, Sridhar group. The Sridhar people are all fighting now amongst themselves. Who's the guru? You got the Shanta Maharaj and he's fighting with the, the Santa Cruz guru. And they're, they're calling each other names. They're calling each other monkeys. All this stuff is going on. So they're all fighting over the property. And so, you know, how is that Rasika? Where Where's the, where's the Rasika? <laughs> when you're fighting over buildings, fighting over money, fighting over lesbian wives and, you know, and, and smoking pot. And, and in Hawaii, they have a lot of Narayan. A lot of Narayan went to Hawaii and, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're growing pot and selling pot and all that stuff. So what's going on with that? It, 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 just, it just means that they didn't, they didn't produce a superior uh, organization. But who brought Narayan to ISKCON? To Maul who bought Sridhar to ISKCON, the GBC. So the only reason anybody even knows about Narayan is because the GBC bought Narayan into ISKCON. The only reason people know about Sridhar is because the GBC bought Sridhar into ISKCON. So they created their own competition by bringing these people in. And even after Dry Tirtha was, was having sex and taking drugs and having all these problems, you know, Sridhar still kept saying, you know, Jayatirtha is a guru, he has to be respected as a guru, and that's the reason the GBC had to get rid of Sridhar in 1982, because Sridhar wouldn't, wouldn't agree that, we, I mean, Jayatirtha was so bad at that point, even the GBC was trying to get rid of him, but Sridhar said, no, we're going to keep Jayatirtha as guru. But there's a whole history of Sridhar supporting uh, false gurus in the Gaudiya Math, which Prabhupada warned us about, that he has a propensity to make false gurus. Um, and then and then he just did the same thing. And, his, and in, in 1986, Hansa Duda was having sex with a, a dozen disciples, maybe, and he was taking drugs, totally out of it. But Sridhar still kept saying, oh, you have to be a guru. Have, what? <laughs> So that's how they uh, they go on, and then that then the, the ignorant people in ISKCON say, oh yeah, so no matter what they do, they're a guru. We have to go along with that because they're getting this bad advice, Sridhar, Narayan, and the GPC. Now, a lot of people tell me Bhakti Vikas is a good guy. No, 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 wait a minute. No, Bhakti Vikas was in England when I was in England, and he was saying we need to keep Jayatirtha even though Jayatirtha is having sex, taking drugs. He said, no, no, the GBC says Jayatirtha is a guru, he's a guru. No, 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 no. Krishna is the person who tells 
us who is a guru who Krishna empowers the guru you do not empower the guru you are not Krishna Krishna dictates to the guru and that's how the guru is empowered you do not dictate to the guru you know and that's what I told Bhakti Vikas way back then I said hey you can't you can't have this going on you can't allow sex and drugs in the Vyasa san that's not that's not what Prabhupada wants yeah but the GBC says it's okay so it's okay no 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 the GBC can't the GBC has no authority to to do this the only person who's authorized to empower the guru is Krishna that's our parampara system the guru it's a descending descending process it comes down from Krishna to the guru it doesn't go up from the GBC up to Krishna <laughs> That's not the, that is not the system. It's handed down from one pure devotee to the next. It is not made by the GBC and then handed up to Krishna. So they misunderstood the whole parampara principle. 